dear world. It's uh September twenty twenty one. And again I wanted to say that during COVID my daughter was abducted illegally, you guys. I was forced to do an illegal court and she was stripped of her rights. So for the first my daughter was taken at almost before she turned sixteen. She was the reason she got taken is because a group of people who did severe abuse to children. And I count it, you guys, there's at least 10 victims and they had been reported many, many, many times, but never investigated. Not only that, you guys, I have proof that she, that they abused her. Like it's hard court proof and the police refused it. It was refused in court and everything, but there was no court, you guys. So... For the first four months that she was gone, she screamed for help. And then, you guys, you have to realize, the last time I've been allowed to see her was the day of her birthday, April 13th, 2021, on her 16th birthday. And she was screaming for help. So we don't even know if she's still alive, you guys. That's the weird thing. And... So many people asked if they could see her, and we were never allowed to visit with her. Um, we tried to get the MLAs and everything, you guys. So there's another illegal court. So what she's saying now is, if it's her, because somebody went online, you guys, like I got no contact with her. Somebody went online and said, you know, they've been accusing me of abuse. They say I abused her and that I didn't even fight for her, that I didn't even show up for court. You guys, court cost me over, like it was something like $6,000 for him, for one lawyer. But then, you guys, there's all other costs. So, like, they were telling her I wasn't fighting for her so that they could throw off the whole court. So I would be prepared for a court and then find out that she was all angry. So now, you guys, what they're saying, what I'm being told is that she hates my guts. I, She told everybody that I abused her and that she had a terrible childhood. And from what I understand, she's been told that she's going to be able to go live on her own. And she believes that. I don't think it's true, you guys, but what is so difficult about this for me, you guys, is that I dreamt it beforehand, and people were telling us beforehand, so people were telling me that my daughter was being taken, I was never going to see her again, and that I was going to jail, so, like... Me and her just held each other in our arms and cried and cried and cried. And I kept telling her, Kitty, something really bad is going to happen soon that I'm not going to be able to stop you from. Because, like, when I dream about her people, I know it's going to come true. So, like, because I've been dreaming all my life. And, it, you know... They did the same thing to my son, and I dreamt that beforehand, too. And people all know about that, the anxiety, you guys. So, I just wanted to get that story out to the world that this is going on. And you guys, according to the dream, I never saw her again. And that's how I feel. I feel... Like, she doesn't understand the danger she's in. There's a... Once they get me out of the picture, you guys, she's going to be all fucked up. She'll, she'll go out on the street. She'll be raped. She'll become a drug addict. It's just terrible, and it's terrible to tell these kids. Like, she said to me, all the other moms are here visiting, and you're not. Like, you just gave up on me. And, like, you guys, do you know how painful that is for... For her, and for months and months and months and months and months and months, 
And like, after this, I don't even know who's going to be able to see her. Like, we, we just don't get to know anything. And the reason why, you guys, like, they're too safe for us to go. They're too unsafe for us to go around. Like, when we go around them, it's just abuse. They're making fun of us. They're laughing at us. But to top it off, you guys, people think I'm being arrested, that they're going to charge me for all this as well. And it's also possible <coughs> that they could make me pay for her for the three years, you guys. So who knows what's happening now. I just know that it's very bad and it's so painful for me and so painful for other people. Like, you understand? I had a child for 16 years that was with me every day to being a kid that's just gone. But you guys, there was somebody doing stuff beforehand that we were trying to report. Like, somebody went into the computer. I had into the computer everything because you know children's aid comes all the time for her so i always have everything prepared and she was counting off to her 16th birthday saying they won't bother us anymore when i'm 16 so i'm gonna take all this stuff down she took down and didn't give me access so when children's aid came i wasn't able to show them stuff she had already anyways the world it's just i'm gone numb everybody has gone numb like when you're involved in something like this it's so hard to believe because you run from person to person but like people are so powerless to help you like yesterday you guys i had a appointment with my garage and uh it's so painful to him that I got there and he canceled the appointment he didn't tell me why but you know people are used to seeing me bubbly everywhere me and kitty just lighten up their day the garage man he used to tell me when you two guys come you light up my day it changes my day. And you guys, what people don't know is this, like, my daughter's being taken by a group of people that were already caught doing illegal things to me. Okay? And people tried to write to the court and tell, and we were just refused. So, and what people don't know is 20, 30, 40 police officers are involved in this and they laughed at me about it like the pain and you got to realize like i'm homeless you guys they forced me out of my home and where i'm lived there's no way to get another place like nobody cares it's just a joke so i'm 55 had my rights totally stripped from me you guys i don't know when i'll get my rights back like what people don't understand is that they go into, they activate emergency alerts on everything. They put a can of a wide emergency alert out on you, but you don't know. And people don't even know about that. We only found out from the court. And we don't even quite know what it is. I know in the last case that they got in trouble for it because it causes when they put emergency alert it causes all kinds of government agencies to put extra attention on your files like uh revenue canada would be notified all kinds of different places so it activates security alerts but it also stops you from like traveling and doesn't mean they're going to take it off you guys i could stay on for my whole life and it messes up all your work accounts and everything. But, you know, why did this happen to me, you guys? Because, I, like, I became under attack. I became under attack by somebody that goes throughout the city doing this to many people. 
Like his goal is to wreck your life, get your child taken. And no matter how many people report him, but he did a crime to me and Kitty was the witness, you guys, to, they put on paper. First of all, they let the guy go, but he always is let go. And he, this is why he makes so much money for the system. So he's destroys kids' lives, you guys, and mothers and fathers. Like it's five, ten people a year. He's having their kid taken from them. And the reason people get taken from him because they he does a crime to them and then he they report them. You know, and that activates like the whole thing. The police know he's never to be arrested. That nobody is ever allowed to take the witness or anything. So my daughter was a witness to a major crime, you guys. And she was actually the one who told people. Like, that's how people, we knew. And she was denied. It was told we were lying. And that we are known to be liars, you guys. That's what they put on the paperwork. And this is a guy, like, people are terrified of him. Anyway, so that's my very sad tale. I'm one of the people in the world, you guys, that right now this is rampant. It's happening everywhere. The exact same model. And these women, you guys, they're criminals like no other. Like the abuse that they dish out to people, they just love it. They loved it. You guys, you understand, they went around telling people stuff about me. So, but I didn't know. So that when I showed up to places, like they tell people you're a pedophile. They tell people like, oh no, she really fucked up her daughter. Like, and they say horrendous things that really activate in people. So I'm in a city now living with all these people that, think I did terrible things that but like this been going on for so long for me and when you're under attack like this the only choice you have you guys you you just got to keep asking the universe but this is why they attack you so bad so that you're not able to do that you guys like the amount of suffering the amount of pain that I live with while a group of people pick on me and laugh at me like the type of abuse like if the type of abuse I've gone through and to have police officers laugh in your face and you guys like I went to police so many times to try to get help for Kitty like she was abused and she was abused really bad in there and I have proof. And the police just, nope, we're not writing it down. We're not telling anybody. And like they abused her over and over and over and made us watch, you guys. So when I say they made us watch, they made us very aware of the abuse that they were doing to her. They made us very aware of the shape she was in which was really bad. They made us very aware that there was nothing we could do about it. And they did that week after week after week. So I would get little glimpses of her all messed up. And you guys, like in my family, there's schizophrenia. There's all kinds of really, like I got, I got family members that, people know don't go around them I have a brother you guys what people don't know like there's thousands of people that don't even know I exist like that's what my parents did when I started to show signs of abuse like they just erased me like no more pictures nothing you guys so there's people that know my parents for over for decades that don't know that they have four children like they did severe abuse to people and they 
do it nonstop because they can't stop you guys. So, and many people, people try to report them. But you guys, people know there's no, people like that always get protected. So, I don't know what to title this video. I'm just trying to get the information out, you guys. So, people understand. Like, this is pure abuse. Like, I got to go the rest of my life. Like, how do you tell people that you had two children that this happened to? And you guys... How do I explain to people where she's at? So, it, like, I already talked to a man that his son died suddenly. And he said, you know, you're willing to connect with me and my group. You know what I mean? Like, it's a death, but it's also a missing persons. It's also a crime. It's also something that's hard to believe. It's also something that has so much stigma attached because... The, the story will always be, like, my parents and that family, like, my dad will most like, well, he already wrote a book. So, they're published authors in my family, you guys. But my dad is involved in a lot of things. Like, he never stays home. My mom does. But, like, all during COVID, he don't pay no attention to rules. He does whatever he wants. And people who do shit like that. They're allowed. They don't ever get in trouble for anything. I've seen it one million times. Not only that, you guys, but they get pre special pr medical privileges and everything. Like, I told you, my dad's been kept alive way beyond. And he don't wait for nothing. If he has a, needs a heart, it's there the next day, you guys. So... This is what they do. They siphon the energy off of other people. Like, it's... Like, my friend says, like, the next level evil, you guys. Like, we can see the next level evil that this is. Like, they fully knew that what happened, I said, was true and what she said. But anyways, you guys, it doesn't matter the truth is she was stripped of her rights. She had the right to see me. She had the right to see her family. She has the right to know the truth, you guys. Because, like, we couldn't even do court because they were manipulating her so much. You know, like, and manipulating us. We didn't get a court. Like, there's not one single person from my side can tell you there was a court it's just all fake you guys and don't give up if you're out there in the world and this has happened to you there's plenty of places to report there's plenty of tribunals going on and I am I did a reading the other day you guys and that's why they stepped up this situation because like they're not allowed to take her yet. Like, I got a year and a half. They're not allowed to do this at this stage. But they're not allowed to do any of this. It's because of watching everything I do. They're, I'm, they know I've reached out and started reporting. They've known... They know that they can't get to me to abuse me as bad because you guys don't realize it's 20 30 people that they send after you guys and like i have documents from the other court to prove it but people already know my car's been rammed twice you guys I, i'm sorry i want to get rid of the you guys because there is no you guys it's just my videos are just under surveillance watched by weirdo police you guys half a million dollars at least spent to get rid of me and not be able to tell people what happened to me that my my the pe people reported my daughter that worked for cps you guys that were already caught severely abusing people 
but never, nobody's been allowed to tell, nobody's been allowed to charge them, and they've been protected ever since, and I became a target individual, meaning they came after me year after year after year. I was put through courts, you guys, to do different things. But not just courts, like, just a lot of my paperwork tampered with. So, anyways, that's my video for the day. The world doesn't get to see my videos, but if you do, copy them. Because what's going to happen to me and her? Like, so many people said, well, they put her in isolation, they put you in isolation. Nobody even knows if my daughter's alive, you guys. Like, I have not found one single person that can confirm that they saw her and know that she's alive. But the weird thing is, like, people have reached out to her. They have told her, Kitty, no, they're telling you their own truth. You're allowed to leave. And they can't get it through to her. And then people told me, oh, my God, your daughter's going online telling everyone that you severely abused her, that you wrecked her life. And, like, people can tell me, like, whoever this person is online, she's not normal. Like, it's not my daughter. Like, it's not... Anyways, nobody can understand why she would all of a sudden, but people don't know. Like, in it wasn't all of a sudden. She was fully told that I just draw, didn't do anything to get her, you guys. Meanwhile, we ran around everywhere. So the people telling her that know. They know how many lawyers I had. They know how much money I spent. They know all the phone calls I made. Because, you guys, you have to realize that I made over 200 phone calls to every day from beginning to end that nobody has heard yet. They're just video footage of me being made fun of. So this is why they're fast-tracking her application. Like... I still have a long time to fight this, you guys. They didn't even take my assessment. So I have a whole medical assessment that they refuse to take. Nobody will even ever get. It's not done yet, you guys. But that's the purpose, you understand? <laughs> because I was supposed to go through their people for the medical assessment. Okay? I'm not allowed to go get my own people. So they want to make sure that she's it's already signed, sealed, and delivered before any of the current action that I'm taking can be in place. Because they know I've already managed to get healthy enough, even though they tried to stop everything to do. They know I'm healthy enough that at least now, each day, I'm able to do a little bit, you guys. So, it's been terrible. So, anyways, if you see this video, that's my story. Again, human trafficking, human abduction, all my rights stripped, all my daughter's rights stripped, you guys, over people who reported abuse people who have the same last name as me but people who didn't even know where i live you guys people who did not even know the basics about me and people who were jealous because i bought a new van and i got the serb srb here in nova scotia if you owned a business so my business boomed you guys. So I made, like I was about to buy a piece of land and you have to realize, like, the story is, is that they, that they have to keep the narrative going is that you're just a bum, that you're, that you're a degenerate. Cause that's what they've been telling people that ever since I'm a little tiny kid, that I'm just this horrible degenerate person that just, Everywhere I go, I leave a trail of abuse and destruction 
and lies and that I'm a very cunning and manipulative person, you guys. And using drugs and drunk and delirious that I got all these thoughts in my head and that aren't true and that I did all kinds of horrible things to her. You guys, in the affidavits, they couldn't they couldn't even find one person that said anything bad about me they had to make up people they made up a whole family like they got this all these people listed here so my brothers and sisters well I have a brother that's my brother you guys that I've never been allowed to see in a room with that he's so dangerous that even by time by time he was a teen he had already been caught abusing girls and like jerking off and shit like that on, in front of girls and shit that a gang of kids beat the mother crap out of him so he can't have any kids himself. Like, I have a brother that's so dangerous that people ever since we're born were just told, don't go in a room with him. Don't. And nobody does. Like, I know a few people... Like, in the world, people think he's great. But as his family, like, no. Like, he, never. So I got a brother that's two years older than me, you guys, that was so dangerous. Like, he had to carry a weapon because I had to live in a house with him, right? So ever since he's born and ever since I can remember, he was a danger to me, like trying to sexually abuse me, rape me. And you guys, what I'm trying to explain is like severe abuse. Like I lived in a family that like if we went camping, we went on a camping trip. The boys were made to sleep with the girls and we were, it was totally okay for them to do sexual abuse to us. But, like, we were in our teens and being forced to sleep with our brothers, you guys. Like, it's a crime like no other But that people know. But everybody is protected. So, it's really awful stuff. So, I'm going to leave my video there. I'm going to try to continue guys to find a way to get my message out to the world but like you just don't know where your life turns from here because like it throws you off there's so much pain involved so like everything about your life comes to an end um and people don't want you around anymore because it's too painful to them. It's too painful because you have to understand, you guys, since I'm 14, I'm going to people with this story. And a lot of those people, it took me a long time to even prove to them. But once they got the proof, they got it. And the, like I have people around me that got it more than I got it. It was them having to tell me, oh, my God, Mar, you don't understand. They would tell me, this is your your parents doing this. This is their church. You, and, you, you know, it took me a long time. But it's always meant for you to find out at the last minute. Like, we were just driving out of the city. We were just about to leave. Like, you guys, I'm sitting right now just because that's where I'm at. And we bought this van and people hit us and went to court and said that. But, or they wanted to, but we had no chance, you guys. But the point is, and I'm sorry that this is long and I keep saying I'm going, but... And I'm flipping this around. But I just want people to grasp that, like, we were so afraid that, like, we switched out cars, but didn't want people to know. So we were going to drive out of the province and not let anybody know. 
but we got caught at the last minute. But it's not being caught at the last minute. They already knew. They waited to the last minute because that's the way the game is played, you guys, to let me know that months and months of work, months and months of trying to to hide away, you guys. We were trying to get out of the city to protect ourselves from a gang of people who were forcing us to take the name of Jesus Christ. They were forcing us into religious rituals to because of, you know, the Mormons believe in time, you guys. But, like, I have, I'm from a very extreme form of, of Mormonism. It was at, it was neo-Nazi down here. It was a white supremacy, pedophilia Mormon church that they did a whole pile of PR and switched over. So like there's tons of us that still know, but like we can that we were like I was born into that. So that didn't change till Maybe I was a teen somewhere, you guys, my early teens, when they began hiding that and changing the rules. You understand that, oh, now now you're allowed interracial marriages. Now you're allowed, black people are allowed in a church before you guys. And still, as far as I know, black people are not allowed to be high ranking. You know, I'm pretty certain that that church is still white supremacy at the very top levels, but they will never let you know, okay? Um, and that's a teaching right in their church, you guys, about the bloodlines, okay? Anyway, so I'll put my video out to the world. Nobody gets to see them because you guys, here in Canada, it's all censored and you're not allowed to talk about stuff like this, but I have them out in many formats. Eventually, my story will get out to the world. It's no different than anybody else's story. Um, and this is why they're scrambling to take my daughter to seal the deal, you guys. Even before, like, there's no court or anything. I'm just being forced. I'm just being told. She's going in long-term care. Here's all the paperwork. You don't got no say. And, like, you understand, you guys, once she goes in there, well, we haven't had rights. Nobody knows anything about her in nine months. Since December 31st, 2020, they took her, you guys. Yes. And the court was January 5th. So you see the they how good they planned this out? Knowing that. The first, the second, the third, the fourth was a holiday, you guys. So I had to do a court that they knew there was no way for me to do. So that's why I was forced to use their lawyer. That's why their lawyer was assigned so that they could beat that loophole. So they beat the loophole by the date that they picked, you guys. So this is how evil this is.